This creator gained over 900,000 followers from a single series and 300,000 followers in just the last 90 days. This is Chloe and she blew up on Instagram with her Lesson 1 of 30 Lessons by 30. Hi guys, welcome back to Brand New Breakdown. Today, while creating this reel, I won't just explain you the steps. I will also explain you the logic and the why behind them so that you can go back and create them yourself confidently. Let's get started. As always, we will start with a new composition. To add one, you can go over here, simply choose 1080x1920 and press on OK. Then let's start by adding the layers one by one. Firstly, let's add the solid layer which you see over here. To add that, just right click, go to new, create a solid. Over here, choose any color that you want, let's say white, press on OK and again press on OK. That way you will get a solid like this. Let's have a look at our first scene. As I move ahead, we have these multiple images of the content creator inside this grey circle, then some text on the top, then this roll scene like this and we move on to the next scene. Let's first create our scene 1. I have pre comb this scene, so let's go over here, let me go to the start. So at the beginning, you just have to create a grey circle. For that, you can go over here, select this circle, ensuring that no layer is selected, just create a circle like this. If you want a perfect circle, just ensure that you are holding on shift. So this way. Then going on fill, you can change to any color that you want. Next, let me delete this. As I move ahead, we can see we have these creators popping in one by one. All we have done is simply remove the background behind them and then added them one by one in the timeline. Also, we have to ensure that they are inside the circle. For that, you just need to take this track mat and connect it to this circle. So if I remove this, if I place this as no mat, we see the entire image outside the circle as well. So in order to ensure that it's inside the circle, we have to take this pick wick over here and connect it to a grey circle. Initially, when you will connect it, at that time usually, it will appear like this. All you need to do is simply come over here and unhide it like this. So at the start, we have these four images, then some text over here. Let me show you how to do this animation. If you observe the text closely, let me play this. So there is slight movement in the text. Let me show you how to create that. So we take the text layer, press over here. Let's just try it again. Go over here, in animate. Just use opacity, make the opacity as 0, open this up, add a keyframe and offset. Going ahead, simply make this as 100%. Let's, so if I play this now, see we have got a text animation. But in order to add the movement, we just have to add turbulent displays on top of it. So let's search for turbulent displays. So going over here, you can just add keyframes in the evolution. But before that, let's decrease the amount a bit, maybe around 3 or 4. And then you can play around with this, see, this way. This will give us that smooth movement. Just add a keyframe, going back. Maybe let's make this a zero. That gives a similar motion. Perfect. Let me delete this one. Finally, at the start, this gray circle is expanding. There's nothing but simple keyframes in scale. So if I press on you over here, you can see from this point, it was 125%. From over here till here, we just made it around 140%. You just have to ensure one thing. All the other layers which you see over here should be parented to this gray circle. If you don't do that, only this circle will expand, while all these images which you see inside will stay as it is. So just take this pp over here and connect it to this grey circle. That way it gives us the feeling that the entire scene is expanding. Now let's have a look at our next scene. Going back, from this point as we transition to scene 2, we rotate this and then it comes to its resting position. For that, we'll need to select all these layers and pre-compose them. I will tell you the reason behind it. See, if you go over here, press on R and try to rotate this. See, even if you rotate it at any speed, it won't rotate in this manner. So you have to rotate it like this, right? At any speed that you do, even if you enable the motion blur, it won't happen that way. In order to create an effect like that, just select all the layers like this, right click over here and pre-compose them. So till this point, we had our scene 1, then let's select this, press on U. See, we added 3 keyframes. First keyframe is in position, then scale and rotation. So at this point, we have added this 3 keyframe. So from this point onwards, till around 1 second, we have ensured that the position changes to here, the scale changes from 116 to 36 and also it rotates two times. If you feel that the rotation is too much, you can also keep it as one. That way it will only rotate 360 degrees. See like this. I hope this is clear. Then once you added the keyframes, all we have done is selected all of them and just press on F9. This will give an easy ease motion. Then going inside the graph editor, we have created a graph like this. In order to create a shape like this, all you need to do is just select this point. And using these pointers, see, you can play around with it, like this. Let's go back. So this took care of our grey circle. Now let's have a look at all the other elements in our scene 2. So firstly, let's have a look at our Instagram ring. Let me solo this, as well as this. For our Instagram ring, we have literally done nothing but simply placed it at this position. So at around 1 second, 
so we have just placed it behind but still as there is lot of fast movements it looks perfect now let's have a look at our screenshot let me solo this as well press on u so if i take the player over here we don't really see it because we have started the layer from over here when it comes to this point you see it somewhere on the corners then as we move ahead we have just added a keyframe in the position so from this point till here it just shifts inside and then comes to rest next to our scene one see like this as simple as that i hope this is clear all we have done is simply added a keyframe in the position perfect next if we go back now as we transition from scene 2 to scene 3 we have this number counter let me show you how to create that let's go back let me unhide this again initially in our screenshot the number is 100000 we'll need to hide it so for that i have created this text cover but till this point we'll still see 100k but then at around 10 frames we'll hide it to hide that i just added a text cover this is nothing but a simple white rectangle on top of the text then on top of that we have simply added a number counter let me solo this let me add this as well so till this point so the more head so we have this number counter going from around 500k to 900k let me show you how to create it this simply take a text layer write any text that you want doesn't really matter this is done using a script i'll provide the script to you in the description you can simply copy paste to create any number into a number counter so let's open this go to text i have added the script this is also called as an expression so you can copy this by pressing command c let's go over here in the text press option and hold it over here and then just paste it like this that's it see that way we got a nice number counter over here and this is quite dynamic for example at the start you want it to be 100 and you want to end it at 900 or even let's say 902 at any number and in the third parameter that you have is a duration that you want to animate over let's say 5 seconds so all you need to do is simply update these three parameters so as we go to the start say it starts with 10 as you go ahead it moves Or five seconds till nine thousand. So I make this as two. See, in two seconds itself, it reached to nine thousand. So going forward, you can create any number counter just using this expression. Let me again delete this as I already added it one time over here. Lastly, let's see the highlight. See when the numbers are increasing, we have a school highlight around it. Let me show you how to create that. Just take your pen tool. Just create any shape that you want. See like this. Okay, I'm not perfecting at the moment, but let's say this was our shape. Let's add a stroke to it. Let's add a stroke of three. Let's keep the fill as done. From over here, where did our shape go? Ah, okay, because the fill is white. Let's say this is our shape. Now all you need to do is go over here. Let's go to add and add the trim paths. So using the trim paths, you can play around with the stroke. So let's say over here we have added a keyframe in end property. Going ahead, going ahead. This will be hundred percent. So add one more keyframe. Going back, let's make this as zero. Now take the playhead little ahead. At that time, you also need to add keyframes in the start. So let's add keyframes over here. Going ahead at this point, this should be also zero. Okay. Now if I play this, perfect, right? Once you're happy with this animation, let's go back. Let's have a look at the animation till this point. So we had these characters, this rotating icon, and then this number counter. Now let's get back to the third and the final scene. If you are here till this point, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It's completely free for you, but it really helps us a lot. Also, at any time you have any doubts, you can reach out to me on Insta. I always help everyone. Let's get back. So let's have a look what we did after this. Zoom in was our final precom, which we did for our scene two. Over here we selected all of them, right click, and just created a precom. I named it as Zoom in, which you see over here. So we press on U. So our scene two ended at this point. So from here till here. We have simply added a keyframe in position, wherein we shifted this entire thing to the left. Then from here, as we move ahead, we simply zoomed in on this. At that point, we also added a keyframe in scale. So from this point, this was 100%, and as we move ahead, we are zoomed in to around 132%. Also, as you are seeing, at this point, we don't really see the text. This is created specifically for the benefit of the viewer. Many times, when the viewer is looking at the reel, at that time, we want a smooth flow to happen. For that, we need to avoid any sudden movements. So, when this was shifting to the left, at that time, we have just added a blur. For adding any blur, I usually prefer to add it on an adjustment layer. To add one, you can go to New and add an adjustment layer from over here. Then, if I press on U, we just add a keyframe in the Gaussian blur, which you can see over here. So, at this point, this Gaussian blur was zero. As we move ahead, we made it around 27-30 percent, and then slowly. as we're zooming in we have again reduced it at this point around 2 seconds it's again back to zero as easy as that some people prefer to add it on top of this but usually i don't do that because for example if you have more elements over here on the sides then you have to go to each of these layers and then add the gaussian blur 
but it is better that you simply add an adjustment layer because for the adjustment layer once you add it for example if you place it over here whatever layers are under this adjustment layer will get impacted right now as we kept the zoom in layer above we don't really see any blur effect over here but if i keep this above the blurriness appears again okay let's go ahead so till this point the blurriness ends and then till here our number counter switches to his final number perfect now let's have a look what we have created in our final scene so from this point onwards till here everything will move up it will go up like this we have the six reels popping up in our scene like this and then later on everything will move out of the screen let's see how this was created firstly over here we have just added simple keyframes in position and scale so from here till here we are simply moving up let's have a look at the graph editor we have graph like this going back we also reduce the size a bit so from here it was 132 as it goes up it goes back to around 90 percent now let's have a look at the six images which pops up at the bottom to create this animation first day i added six images to our timeline then taking this peak we simply linked it to a zoom in precom that way when this moves up this also moves along with it if you don't do that these six animations will happen independently but we don't really want that so if i press on u over here let's see the animation that we have done so at this point the scale is zero and the position is little downwards so let's move ahead and this is linked to this composition as this is moving up the screenshot will also move along with it so as we go over here the scale becomes 77 percent and also it reaches its final position the same thing we have done for all the six elements so if i go over here if i press on u you can see we have similar keyframes that we have added firstly the keyframe in scale where the scale will be zero as we move ahead scale will turn to around 77 percent i hope this is clear perfect and finally if you think this is too slow you can also add little motion blurriness to it to add that you can simply go over here and enable this like this that way see on a single series 100,000 followers from a single perfect and now finally all we have done is simply added a keyframe in the position so from here we are just pushing all the elements outside the screen perfect so this takes care of the hook i hope you like the tutorial if you want me to create more of these let me know in the comments whatever topic that you would like and if you are new to after effects you can check out the entire masterclass on our channel I hope to see you very soon.